If ever there was a more brutal indictment on the downward slide of MCU Phase 4 than We know you missed T'Challa, but to make you feel better, here's Riri Williams? I can't think of one. God help us. Black Panther Wakanda Forever, a movie a lot of fans have been anticipating for a lot of different reasons. After Chadwick Boseman passed away, they had to go back to the drawing board and rework the whole thing, making the decision to not recast T'Challa and instead retire the character, and there's been so much debate about about this with so many people not being happy about it and wanting the character to live on played by a new actor beats me what their reasoning was but I guess Marvel did what they thought was the most respectful thing. I don't know what the right decision would have been and I'm not gonna speculate because there's no point. I will say that after seeing Wakanda Forever, I wish they had just recast T'Challa, because I don't think there's anything in this movie, creatively speaking, that warranted getting rid of him. T'Challa being gone now hurts, and not just because it's supposed to in this movie. Because with him gone, this new direction they came up with felt ill-conceived from the jump. Don't get me wrong, there are bright spots in this thing, but overall, I just don't think it was worth it, and not for the reason you're probably thinking of. So our lead character is gone. The rest of the team has to get by without their quarterback now. In fact, I saw someone on Twitter make a joke about this being supporting cast the motion picture or something like that. It might have been Critical Drinker, it might have been Doomcock, I forget who. But they're not wrong. That's exactly what we've got here. But that doesn't have to be a big problem because now Shuri and Queen Ramonda are the new spotlight characters. Letitia Wright was a big scene stealer in the first film. Angela Bassett classes up every everything she's in, and they're both excellent in the movie. It's not hard to accept them as the new leads. You might not think of them as lead characters, but that doesn't mean the actors can't do it. I thought they did a really admirable job carrying the load here. T'Challa's absence is absolutely felt. A lot. But I never once thought Shuri and Ramonda weren't pulling this off. That's the good news. Some other good things. The music is great. Not Atlantis looks really cool. It's beautiful, actually. The scene where we get shown around that huge underwater city, that's the best scene in the movie. It takes itself very seriously, so there's no silly, shitty comedy. That was a welcome change. The terrible CG rhinos are gone. These are all big positives. So at a glance, things are looking up. And at least thematically, this is the direction I want to see the MC you go in, being a little more serious, getting away from the everything has to be a joke crap they were really overdosing on for a while. And the biggest silver lining I can come up with from not recasting T'Challa is that it gave them an excuse to tackle some more mature stuff, some more emotional stuff that we haven't seen in the MCU that much. The story is basically about dealing with the loss of T'Challa and everyone coping with that grief in their own way, some of them handling it worse than others. Of course, Shuri and Ramonda's grief gets the most attention, and when the movie is about that, when it's about those two characters dealing with this issue, it's good. There are some very genuine, poignant moments here, specifically the first scene and the last scene. You'll probably get misty-eyed a couple times. This is where the movie is at its strongest because I'm sure the cast and crew were drawing from their own feelings about losing Chadwick. I especially liked how it affected Shuri because she's the one who's hit the hardest by it. She's the one who really struggles to get closure on it, and the movie isn't afraid to let her go to some dark places, almost to a place she can't come back from because her brother died and she's angry. That's what happens sometimes. The emotions are ugly, but they're human. The problem comes when you make it more about the cast and crew dealing with the loss of Chadwick than the characters dealing with the loss of T'Challa. Because when you do this, you're not necessarily gonna make the best creative decisions. Unfortunately, that's how it shakes out, and it kneecaps the movie immediately. I'm sorry, but the way T'Challa dies is f***ing dumb. They were so wrapped up in tying it into Chadwick's death that they didn't even seem to notice or care how stupid it actually was. He dies from an undisclosed illness. An illness that he kept a secret because Chadwick kept his illness a secret. But for T'Challa, that makes no f***ing sense. Dude, you're the king of the most advanced and powerful nation there is. You have medical technology the rest of the world can only dream of, and literal wizards who can rewrite the fabric of reality of phone calls 
away. Why the hell wouldn't you tell anyone you're sick? Shuri even says at one point that by the time she found out about it, it was too late for her to help him. When the movie opens, she's working on a cure, but she runs out of time because she didn't know soon enough. Do you see how ridiculous this is? That's how T'Challa bows out? Are you kidding me? That's idiotic. And it's only the beginning of the stupid stuff, I'm afraid. Almost as dumb is their reasoning for why there can't be another Black Panther. Oh, Killmonger destroyed all the heart-shaped herbs? So what? So what? You're telling me that the Wakandans never thought to account for something like that? They never had a contingency in case the herb that's the source of the Black Panther's power might wilt or die out somehow? They didn't keep an emergency supply of seeds in a secret lockbox or something? All their incredible vibranium technology that seems to be able to do anything under the fucking sun and they can't recreate a plant? No. No, I just don't buy it. They're jumping through some re-goddamn ridiculous hoops to justify why T'Challa died the way he did and why they can't replace the Black Panther until the end of the movie and it all just feels like a bunch of bullshit. They were so focused on processing their own grief about Chadwick that they put some huge creative handcuffs on the movie that was supposed to honor him. And look, I'm sympathetic. I am. I know everybody misses Chadwick, but at the end of the day, you've got to do what's best for the movie. And I just don't think that's what they were concerned with here. And you know what else wasn't best for the movie? Riri fucking Williams. Oh my god. God, I cannot stress enough what a catastrophic misfire this was. Let's not even go into the logic behind introducing a terrible, unpopular character from the comics that nobody likes, but giving her such a prominent role on top of that? I couldn't tell you what the hell they were thinking, but holy shit does this not work. Whether it's in the comics or in the movies, Riri Williams is just the worst. And I mean that. There's a reason why she was barely in the trailers, and it's not because her role was small. I wish that were the case. She is f***ing insufferable. The worst thing in the movie, point blank, period. And that really f***ing hurts them because she's not just a pivotal character, she's the most pivotal character. I shit you not, nearly every major event in this movie is about her. When the Not Atlanteans start f***ing shit up, it's because of Riri. When Not Atlantis attacks Wakanda, it's because of Riri. When you're this close to throwing up your hands and walking out of the theater halfway through the movie? It's because of Riri! First of all, the actress is annoying as hell. Granted, the script didn't do her any favors. They give her all the worst lines in the movie. She spends most of her screen time either bragging or complaining about stuff. Several big plot points she's wrapped up in feel like absolute bullshit, and even if she does get somewhat less irritating in the third act, it's really just because they stopped focusing on her so much, and it's not nearly enough to make up for the horrible first impression she made. Makes. And you know what the really sick part is? Riri in the comics is awful. She's an awful character. And to their credit, the filmmakers don't seem to be unaware of that. So they made an effort to rejigger her somewhat. And the changes they made are good ones. She's not demanding that her teachers be racist to her. She's not stealing Tony Stark's technology. She's not overthrowing any foreign governments yet. So MCU Riri is actually better than she is in the comics. And she's still terrible! No amount of rejiggering was gonna make her any good. This character is just bad, and everything they do with her in the movie just hammers that point home even harder. The way they introduce her is asinine. She built a vibranium detector even though she had no vibranium to test it on? Yeah, you figure that one out. She straight up murders a bunch of dudes and no one even blinks at this, and afterward it's like it never even happened. It's as if they were trying to make her as objectionable as possible possible. And this drags the movie down more than anything, because she's basically what triggers the conflict between Wakanda and not Atlantis. She is why the two nations go to war. And there wasn't a single moment in the movie when she felt like she was worth all this trouble. Not a single moment of the big battle when I wasn't thinking, guys, guys, just let Namor have her. I'm serious. That might sound harsh, but I don't even care. I have no idea why the Wakandans are bending over backwards to protect this dipshit. Let's not pretend like Riri Williams is some kind of saint, okay? Earlier in the movie, we watched her kill several innocent people without a second thought, and she's obviously not gonna face any justice for that in the human world, so why the hell not give her to Namor? Trying to keep this asshole safe is not worth the price you're paying, guys. It really isn't. The decision to make Riri 
Riri Williams of all people so important that the plot basically revolves around what's happening to her instead of the people we actually give a shit about absolutely ruins this movie. But there was one funny thing about her though. It wasn't lost on me that throughout the whole film the characters were going out of their way to call her the scientist. Even after they find out who she is, she's the scientist. Almost like the filmmakers knew how stupid and cringy the name Riri is and wanted it spoken out loud as little as possible. Something to think about, Bendis. Just saying. The other big thing in the movie is Namor, and thankfully this part isn't bad exactly, but it is really f***ing weird. The actor is good, I'm not putting any of this on him. Not Atlantis is very well realized and visually just stunning. Namor's origin is interesting, they did insert some really obvious politics in there, but it's not like they never did that with the Wakandans. That aside, it's a good origin. It's just not Namor's origin. There's a reason why I've been calling it not Atlantis. Because everything about it is different. Basically, what they did was they pulled an MJ with Namor. You know how in the Spider-Man movies, Zendaya isn't playing Mary Jane, she's playing a different character created for the movie who just happens to have the same initials? So it's obvious who she's standing in for, but she's really someone brand new? That's Namor in this movie. I don't know why Marvel keep doing this, but all the changes they made to him and to the Atlanteans just feel so... random. And Namor's not my favorite character or anything, so I'm not super precious about them sticking to the source material with him, but... What was wrong with just doing what the comics did? What was wrong with his comics origin? Going so far off in a different direction was... really weirdly unnecessary. And if this was about anything other than them just not wanting Namor to be a white dude, I'd love to know what the thought process behind this was, because holy shit, there were some strange left turns being taken here. Now what smooths things over a little bit is that the actor is pretty likable, he has a fair amount of charisma, and the character works in a vacuum. He can be charming and threatening and powerful and ruthless, so he does everything the movie needs him to do, he's just not Namor. They might as well have just called him something else. And they kind of do, actually. Because aside from him being a super strong fish man with wings on his ankles, similarities to the comics are out the window. If you were doing all this, why even make him Namor at all? Why not just make him a brand new character? I... I don't get it. But at least he isn't a chore to be around. He's not some intolerable asshole the movie demands that we get on board with despite how horrible he is. I'd much rather spend time with him than f***ing Riri. You just have to get past the fact that he's Namor in name only. He's also the only significant male character in the film. M'Baku and Everett Ross exist, but they don't do very much. God knows the women get the badass treatment and then some, but if you have a penis and you're not named Namor, you're in the back seat, which really makes me think that one of their ulterior motives to not recasting T'Challa was turning Black Panther into another not-so-subtle girl power vehicle. And Riri Williams notwithstanding, I don't even have a problem with that as long as you don't get stupid with it, but they do! I don't have a problem with being the new Black Panther. I'm cool with that. That's fine. But when you have her doing flippy dippy stuff seconds after being mortally wounded and just shaking it off like it's nothing when we saw T'Challa be hurt a lot worse from injuries a lot less severe, your reasons for doing this really don't hold water anymore. When there's so much else about the movie that feels so ill-conceived, you don't get a pass on that stuff. Black Panther Wakanda Forever is messy. Really messy. The way the characters deal with their grief over T'Challa Bella's death is well handled and emotionally affecting, that was some of my favorite stuff, but it doesn't change the fact that the way he dies is f***ing stupid, and unfortunately, so are a lot of other things in this movie. There are plot beats that make little to no sense, but which have to be contrived into existence just to get the story from point A to point B. Other things are either so different from the comics that you're not even sure what the purpose of changing them so much was, or they're about Riri Williams, and everything she touches turns to crap! Riri Williams sucks. Comics, movies, it doesn't matter. She's just a garbage character. Including her was the worst decision they could have made. And Jesus Christ, she's the one the entire f***ing plot hinges on. The Riri factor damn near tanks the whole movie on its own. Because it needs you to be on her side, and you're not. It needs you to think she's actually worth all this trouble for the story to work, and you don't. The stuff that's not about Riri is... 
better. I ended up liking Namor for what he is, even though he's almost unrecognizable from the guy in the comics, but it's pretty obvious that the main focus of this movie was people dealing with the loss of Chadwick Boseman. They were less focused on making sure the story was airtight, and it just isn't. And I hate to say that, because they were in such a tough spot after Chadwick passed away, and maybe they weren't sure what the best way to move forward was. But like I said, at the end of the day, you've got to do what's best for the movie, and that's just not what happened here. Thanks so much for watching, and while you're here, please do all the other YouTube things. Ding the bell icon and follow my social media so you can always be notified when I upload new stuff. Links to that and to my live streaming channel are down below. And most importantly, don't forget to hit that thumbs up, leave a comment, share, subscribe, and make sure you're still subscribed, because what really deserves to die an incredibly stupid off-screen death from an undisclosed illness it probably could have easily prevented if it hadn't been an idiot about it is the YouTube. YouTube algorithm. That's all for now, but I'll be back with more soon. So stay tuned for that, take care, and I'll see you next time.